All right, coming up, we're going to be catching up with Michelin-starred chef Michel Roux Jr., who reckons he can judge how good a cook you are by the way you scramble your eggs. Welcome, Michel. Thank you for having me back. Is this true? Just yes, by... most definitely. Yeah? Most definitely. Scramble an egg uh, or cook an omelette, I can, I can tell if you, you're going to cut the mustard or not. Well, this is a challenge that we cannot resist. <laughs> and so, therefore, do you mean that you fancy yourself as a little bit of a cook? Yeah, so I'm I think now, though. we'll elect you because we've got it over there. Colleen, come oh, on. Can't I just tell him now I can't cook? No, 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 no. off you go. Uh, we're going to give you what? however long it takes us to go away for the break and get your aprons on. And uh, Michelle, you keep your eyes on these two women and see which is the natural cook at the end of it. Anything could happen here. My money's on Jamelia. I'm a bit worried about Colleen because her eggs are a wee bit old. But never... <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> see you after the break. <laughs> Women. I'm just back from casualty because Colleen did thump me for that comment that I made about her ex. I do apologise. Uh, still to come, Joe Brand, and I wonder what she thinks about the new craze for breastfeeding selfies. That should be interesting. Uh, but over there, we have Jamelia and Colleen busily plating up their scrambled eggs because they're joined today by one of Britain's best chefs, Michelle Rue Jr., who says that you can tell people's cookery skills, where they've got talent for cookery, a real feel for cookery, just by the way that they scramble their eggs. So here we go, the big decider. How are we doing, girls? Clean, yeah, Julia? Um, yeah, is, I've kind of... Uh, I, I think... Uh, yeah, we're <laughs> Is Good girl, Colleen, here? bring it on over, bring oh, it on no, over. Um, there we go, okay. Michelle, I'm going to give bring you two forks. Oh, I've got, we've got oh, four. it's got there it. There you oh, go, yeah. don't worry. Now, it's um, not about presentation at this stage. It is. Is it not? Oh, <clears> right. <throat> oh. <laughs> I think I'll, be, I'll be the judge of that. I'll take <laughs> the knife, it. I'll take the knife. <laughs> right. Right, let's oh, have a look. So this is Colleen's that you're tasting? Yeah, at least they're cooked. Oh, why not? Mm-hmm. What was it? <laughs> One thing <laughs> that's in a minute. I'm, a, I'm avoiding the black bits. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, phew. Mm-hmm. We took a second fork full of Jamelia's. Yeah, that's, that's good, good. Mm. isn't it? Right. I like to see lots of butter. There's loads and loads of butter on both toasts, so I think congratulations to both of you. Great. Not quite enough seasoning here. Yeah, I was a bit worried about going over the top. You've been a professional no, no, and all that. Not quite enough. <laughs> This one has the slight edge. Yes. To me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and I, I, must, I must say, it's, it's not just about what's on the plate. The way you move in the kitchen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a sign of a true chef. Michelle, I have to say, that was a bitter blow, wasn't it, Cole? <laughs> I'm glad blow. I left Shell in it. <laughs> But as you say, it's not just about the eggs. I mean, what are you observing there? What, where, how do you see the talent? I, I, yeah, I think, you know, it's not just about learning how to do a recipe or, you know, or teaching someone how to, how to cook. Um, there's far more to it than that, to being a great chef. Uh, you know, it's, it, you're born with a certain talent, you're born with a certain flair. Um, and it's like a painter, skills. isn't it, it's, it as well? It is, for yeah. me, yes. So, so um, yeah, a, a great chef is born, he's not made. Right, so you can obviously teach a level of proficiency, but that extra mm. je ne sais quoi... Yeah. Oh! Mm, uh, <laughs> ...is what can I teach you over. I, I, I firmly believe But doesn't that. it help to be born into... I mean, you've been born into a, a cooking dynasty mm. and you were sort of under the kitchen table, you said, yes. from a very young age, watching it all going on. Um, obviously, mine and Colleen's children have not been born into a cooking mm -hmm. dynasty, but are there, are there kids that... It, they, it just comes. <laughs> it just comes from nowhere, and they haven't had that background, and and they still have this passion. Absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, I was born into a dynasty, and uh, and so was my daughter. My daughter's a chef too, mm. but um, but that that should really not have any any consequence other than other than being exposed to great food and to cooking at an early age. And there are numerous fantastic chefs, some British talented chefs that have come from you know maybe not the best backgrounds, and have made it to the top because they have got the talent. Yeah. But the pressure on you then as a child must have been, or certainly growing up, must have been huge because, I mean, as Jane says, a cooking dynasty, Albert, Rue, Michel, Rue, Senior, your uncle, mm. what if you hadn't had it? 
Um, gosh. He could have been an accountant or a trained no, accountant, no. aren't you? No, no, no. Well, yes, I am. I know. Yeah. But that's certainly not something I would have done. I couldn't sit behind a desk. Never sit behind a desk. What me me neither. Yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. In another life, maybe yeah. maybe an athlete, because I love my running. I, I love uh, long-distance running. But uh, but for me, it was, it was just... I, I can't think of a... It was just anything else other than being a chef. Destiny, really. To I've be, always, yeah. I've always thought that I learned to cook from my mum. So do you say that you don't learn? You just, it's just in you, organic. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Oh, oh yes. I mean, we yeah. all, we always, we all love mm. mum's cooking or yeah. grandma's cooking. You know, it's the favourite, isn't it? And mm. we always harp on about that. And I do think that, uh, you know, generationally, you will get certain recipes or certain tastes mm. passed on to you so your favorite yeah. might be your mum's like, okay. I don't know, mm. yeah. sunday Everything roast or whatever it is yeah. uh, and and that but stays with you forever i do think cooking though people enjoy it is a real passion yeah, mm. yeah. See, i just see it as a chore yeah well, that, that's you see that's, that's it i can, I can taste i can I'm taste that i can taste the passion <laughs> here i can taste the chore there there's still eggs over there that i can't <laughs> Instantly stresses me out. Yeah, yeah well, because I think you know. Oh. Get the other half to cook them. He does. Well, yeah. There you go. And it is incredibly, <laughs> incredibly hard work, isn't yeah. it? I mean, you, you yourself, you're in at eight in the morning. You don't get home sometimes before midnight, mm -hmm. and then you've got people like us coming into your restaurants, going, "This isn't, this isn't warm enough. This isn't sending this back." It's a bit of a thankless mm -hmm. task sometimes. It, it, it is an incredibly hard job, and the, and the thing is that uh, you know every day we have a full restaurant uh, of customers that need to be uh, impressed, you know, impressed. Yeah. and everybody's slightly different. Mm. So, you but know, you, you're it, certainly it trying to spread the passion and we have seen a major change in, in our attitudes towards food in this country, although sadly we still have a major problem with obesity, but mm. um, you're part of a big food festival or mm. organising a big food festival, I think, in London uh, the week after next. And, and they're next happening week. actually all over the country now, which is really encouraging, isn't it? And right. is that part of just trying to get the message out there and trying to make it more than a chore? I, I, I think so, and, and the, the British public now is, is, are really into their food, and, and that's marvellous. You know, there's been a wholesale change over the last 20 years, and, and maybe, maybe longer, and that's you know, down to my father and uncle. And these festivals, you know, Taste of London, which is on next week, uh, starting from Thursday to Sunday, it's the 11th year now, mm. and it's growing bigger. And they're bigger massively and oversubscribed, aren't they? People well, there, love there, it. there are still, still a few tickets available, yeah. but, but it is. It, it's, it, you know, people flock to these festivals because but they're so so wonderful. Not to be critical because they're hugely enjoyable and I go to them and I love them but you know it has been argued it's kind of food porn mm. and actually well, There's nothing know, wrong in, with that. In people's, <laughs> no no nothing wrong with a bit of food porn but <laughs> in terms of people's day to day lives still day to day eating habits we're not seeing any terrific improvement and we are seeing a major problem with, with obesity so is there a disconnect between celebrity chefs and fusion food and all the fancy mm. stuff mm. and you know the, the Monday to Friday bog stand Stuff. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think it, celebrity chefs, and I hate that moniker. I mean, uh, um, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to, to you know, put forward this message that healthy eating uh, is not necessarily uh, extravagant, expensive, or laden with cream or butter. Healthy eating uh, can be, uh, you know, can, can be simple, mm. uh, nutritious, uh, fun. Uh, you know, and, and all of that, and get your children involved into mm. that. Um, and obesity is a major problem, but it's not just a British problem. It's also in France, believe it or not. But it's France, I mean, I know you're saying it's growing in France, but France is so far down the scale True. compared to the UK. There's a major difference. Uh, you have to look at what are they doing right and that we're doing wrong. Mm. Mm. Ready yeah. meals. So when, when you're at home, do you, I mean, do you cook beans on toast? Would you, would you do something like that? No. No. Yes. No. No. I mean, do, do, does your wife cook, or are you the my, my, chef my, of the home? Yeah, my... Why wouldn't you though? You see, it's a bit snobby that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not a question of being a snob. It's a question that I don't particularly like beans on oh. toast. Oh, okay. It, it, it's, a, it's a taste thing. But I'm you'd like, have scrambled eggs on toast. I would. I love. Yeah. I love okay. scrambled eggs on toast. Okay. My, my wife cooks at home because I'm never there. So it's, yeah. you know, she's always cooking for, for herself. And when we, you know, when I do have a night off, we, we tend to go out for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally, I will cook at home as well. Yeah. But, but it's, it's always something very simple. I guess it's a bus turn up in the restaurant. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and it is a bit of a busman's holiday, I guess, you're cooking at home, it's isn't fine. it? Or what is it, cobbler's yeah. children, whatever the expression is. Well, listen, Michelle, it's been lovely to have you here. Please feel free to take away <laughs> both <laughs> Colleen's <laughs> and Jamelia's scrambled because they've chilled nicely. And it's uh, quite nice when they're now. a bit, you know, cold, so isn't cold. it? Uh, Michelle Rue Jr., everyone. Oh, <laughs> thank you.